Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Pinebook Pro. Now this is an ARM-based Linux laptop released by the people over at Pine64. So I've been waiting a long time to get my hands on one of these, and I finally broke down and picked one up on eBay. Somebody had a second-hand model available, and I figured I'd go ahead and scoop it up and see how it performs. So this video isn't going to be a review video. This is going to be kind of an overview video and my first impressions. I've had this in my possession for three days, and it's actually running the Debian desktop that they have available for download. But they've recently switched over to pre-installing Manjaro ARM on these units, and I will do my review using Manjaro ARM because that's the recommended software, but I have spent three days with the Debian desktop, and to tell you the truth, I'm actually pretty impressed with this little laptop. Now, this is not a replacement for an x86 PC. You can get used PCs on eBay for around $150 that will destroy this in performance. But with this being an ARM-based laptop, it's been a pretty enjoyable experience. I'm actually really surprised here because it's running a chip that I'm really not a big fan of. It's the RK3399. I've done a lot of videos on different single board computers using that SOC, but since those videos, a lot of development has gone into the RK3399, especially on Pine64's part, and it's actually performing much better than I ever expected it would. So this laptop contains a 14.1 inch screen, and over on the left hand side we have our barrel jack for power, a single USB 3.0 port, and a USB Type-C port. And this USB Type-C port can be used for video out, transferring data, or charging the unit up. Over on the right hand side we have a single USB 2.0 port, a 3.5mm audio jack for your headphones, and a micro USB card reader. The keyboard on the Pinebook Pro is totally fine, the keys have great travel, it feels fine, it's easy to use, but one thing I'm not a big fan of is the trackpad they used in the Pinebook Pro. And full disclosure here, I'm not a big fan of mini trackpads on laptops, so that might be part of it, but I am getting some misclicks here, I'm not sure if it's due to software or the hardware itself. So the outer shell, at least the top and the bottom, is constructed of aluminum, but the inside where the keyboard sits and everything like that is plastic like most laptops that advertise an aluminum shell. Overall, build quality seems pretty great for a little ARM-based laptop. But I think one of the best parts about the Pinebook Pro is the price. It retails on Pine64's website for $199, and they'd be hard-pressed to get it any lower than that given the specs we're getting here. And speaking of specs, for the CPU we have the Rockchip RK3399, this is a 6 core ARM SoC. We have two A72 cores at 1.8 GHz, but we do have the option to overclock those to two. We also have four other smaller A55 cores running at 1.4 GHz. The GPU is a quad core Mali T860, 4 GB of LPDDR4. This is running in dual channel and you cannot upgrade it. It is soldered to the board. The base model comes with a 64 GB eMMC module. It's eMMC 5.0 and you can upgrade this. The one I have has a 128 GB module in it. Plus, we have that micro SD card, and there are ways to boot from that micro SD card. It's definitely not going to be as fast as eMMC, but you can use an SD if you really need to. 802.11abgn and AC Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth 5.0. We also have that 14.1 inch IPS LCD display at 1920 by 1080. Now it's not the best IPS that I've ever seen, but it definitely works well for a laptop like this. And as for the operating systems, it's actually pretty crazy how many they have available right now. I'm running the Debian desktop, but we also have Manjaro, Armbian, Android, Chromium, Kali Linux, and there's many more. I'll leave a link to the wiki in the description. There's a lot of operating systems that are working on the Pinebook Pro right now. But like I mentioned, if you do order one of these right now from their website, it will come preloaded with Manjaro ARM. It's not based on Ubuntu, it's based on Arch, and I'm a big fan of Manjaro, so I really want to get this wiped out, install that operating system, and do my review that way. So I definitely had to take a look inside of this laptop. I just wanted to see how everything was laid out. I mean, I know what's powering it, but I wanted to pull the bottom off here just to give you guys a quick look also. So they've actually done a really great job with the layout here. Putting this whole thing together, we have those dual stereo speakers, a 10,000 milliamp hour battery or 36 watt hour battery here. In tests that I've seen online, six to eight hours of battery life. Some people are claiming eight to 10, but I'd say it'd be around five to nine hours. I mean, it really depends on what you're doing. Here's that eMMC module I was talking about. Very easy to get to. This has been upgraded to 128 gigabytes from 64, and this is what your operating system will be running from. Underneath the shield is our CPU and RAM. This is a totally fanless laptop. It's passively cooled, and they're actually using the bottom shell. It's all aluminum as the heatsink for the RK3399. 
and it does a great job. I mean, there's a lot of aluminum here to cool that CPU off. All right, so here we are at the Debian desktop. I just connected over HDMI to make it a little easier to see. I've also set my CPU to max performance, two gigahertz, and we're gonna go to performance. So we've got the CPU running at its maximum frequency. And the very first thing I noticed when I booted this up was the Widevine driver updater here. This is gonna allow us to watch Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, and Disney Plus using Chromium. Without it, most ARM-based Linux devices like this would not run Netflix or Hulu in Chromium. So we do need that Widevine driver. And luckily the updater is right here on the desktop. So I've run the updater. I'm gonna open up Chromium. I'm connected to my five gigahertz network. We'll head over to Netflix and I did test this out. I signed in, I just wanted to make sure everything was working here. We'll just scroll down here. We'll go to Bojack Horseman. Well, and our services are crucial to this industry. All right, you little pishes. Let's wrap this up quick so you can all go back to getting me wrong coffees. And there you have it. We have it's working request. great on this little device. Like we can go full screen garbage. with it. it appears we are Back in on out. And I'll shut this down. So the next thing I wanted to test was some YouTube video playback. I've tested a lot of boards with this same CPU in it, the RK3399, and I really wasn't impressed with video playback, be it natively or streaming. So we're going to go with Big Buck Bunny here. I will turn on Stats for Nerds here. And we're sitting at 720p, already have some drop frames. We'll go full screen with it. I was really hoping that this would be fixed up. You won't notice these drop frames to the naked eye. When you're watching this, you'll never notice that we've already dropped 70 frames here at 720p. But it is doing it, as you can see up here. So now we're just going to go up, and I don't think it's going to handle 1080p very well. I have blocked 60 FPS playback, so we're at 1080p 30. And we're buffered out pretty far already. Continuously dropping frames here, and that's with Chromium. I'm sure it's going to do the same thing with Firefox. Again, at 720p with these drop frames, you won't notice it. But looking at this at 1080p, I do notice some drop frames to the naked eye. So yeah, video playback isn't the greatest on this, or YouTube video playback. I mean, Netflix and Hulu look pretty good, but there's no real way for me to see if it's dropping any frames, and I'm pretty sure it is. So using this like a regular old laptop, I mean, like an average person would, we're going to open up Chromium. I'm not going to speed any of this up. We're going to go to Google News. We'll check some news, see what's going on here. I mean, it's not ultra fast, but it is definitely usable. We'll search for some tech news here. We definitely had some delay with that one, but let's go to a separate website. We'll go to The Guardian. It's going to load right up. Keep in mind, this does not have Ethernet built in, but you could use a USB Type-C to Ethernet adapter or a USB 3.0 connector. I'm connected over Wi-Fi using my 5 gigahertz network, and I mean, browsing the web isn't too bad. I've also installed GIMP for some light image editing. It seems to load up pretty quickly here. I got a 4K photo that I downloaded. And overall, this has been pretty good for light image editing. If you want to touch up your own photos or something like that, it's going to work fine. But if you're looking to draw with this or add more than 10 layers, I'd say, you would definitely notice some slowdown with a little machine like this. But for light image editing, the Pinebook Pro would work out just fine. And in my full review, I'm going to run a lot of benchmarks and we'll even come back to GIMP with a GIMP benchmark just to see how it performs and stacks up against other ARM-based little single board computers. I also installed a couple games. Unfortunately, with Open Arena, I just couldn't get it to launch. I keep getting a bunch of errors. Hopefully, I can get that fixed for my full review. But I do have Free Doom here. And obviously, Doom should run well on here, even Free Doom. It runs on pretty much everything, from ATMs all the way to the TI-89 calculator. So we shouldn't have any issues here playing games like this. So far, I'd say it's been a fun experience. Is this thing super fast? Definitely not. Not even for a $200 laptop. 
but to have that ARM-based CPU built into a laptop with a battery and screen, everything connected in this nice little form factor is pretty cool. Would I want to use the Pinebook Pro as my daily driver? No, I wouldn't. I would actually rather use this little guy here. This is a Lenovo S130. $99 on Black Friday. It's got 2 gigs of RAM, an N4000 CPU, and 64 gigabytes of storage. It comes with Windows pre-installed, but I've installed Linux on it, and it's been a little workhorse. I love these little tiny cheap laptops. Regular price on this is around 200 bucks. And in raw performance, it crushes the Pinebook Pro either using Linux or Windows. But don't get me wrong, the Pinebook Pro is an awesome little laptop. I love seeing this from manufacturers like Pine64. And this is definitely not for everybody, but they're not marketing it in that manner either. I do have some more videos planned with the Pinebook Pro. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this Debian desktop and install Manjaro ARM. I also want to do a little Android video on this thing. I want to install it to the internal eMMC. You can boot from SD, but it's going to be much slower than eMMC. Now, if there's anything else you want to see tested or running on the Pinebook Pro, let me know in the comments below, and I will have a full emulation video coming up. I'm going to see if I can get Laka or Botocera up and running on this with the built-in screen. If you'd like to learn more about this laptop, I will leave links to Pine64's website. I'm also going to leave a link to their wiki so you can see what other operating systems are available for this. I believe there's around 10 right now, and I was actually really impressed by seeing that. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Keep an eye on the channel. Got more videos coming. But like always, thanks for watching.